Okay guys, check this out. This is my online Azure SQL database that I connected with Microsoft Access, except now I don't have to use the administrator password. I can use a different user and password, and that user gets access to all of the tables immediately when they log into the application, but users can have very different permissions using Azure SQL security. So now I can have a read-only user who doesn't have permission to update, but I can also assign users to read and write, and I I can also do special permission for those of you who have stored procedures in your Azure SQL database. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access on Azure SQL series, and we're gonna take a look at how to add users to our database. Now, in a previous episode, we added an administrator user to our Azure SQL database but we didn't really add any other users like read-only read users or read-write users. And today we'd like to take a look at that. And that makes it very, very handy and useful for making applications based on Azure SQL. Also, this technique will allow you to scale your Microsoft Access application to many, many users as you'll be benefiting from the scaling properties of Azure SQL. Users will be able to have their own downgraded security level which makes sure that they don't do things they're not supposed to. Let's get to it. Interested in more cool topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay guys, in my previous episode over two years ago on this topic, I was only demonstrating a single user database where the username and password were the administrator password, sort of hidden in the background. And in this episode, we are going to be adding a whole bunch of different kinds of users uh, so that you can use this great functionality from Azure SQL. Now you cannot do what we're doing today in the Azure portal. Notice that I'm using SQL Server Management Studio, which is a free download. Make sure you go and Google that and you can get a free download of that and you'll be able to connect to your Azure SQL database. If you don't know how to set up the database in the first place, make sure to check out the episode in the card just above. Okay, so the database that I used two years ago is long gone. Uh, but we have been working on this tow operations database, which is for a fictional tow truck company. And I've logged in with the administrator password, which is the only username and password that I have for this database uh, in a similar way to you will have for yours. If you have set up your data server in Azure SQL Server with a single database and one username and password. Now this data is being used in another series that I currently have running, which is on web forms, where we make a web application to our Azure SQL backend. But in this case, what we want to do is we also want to have an access front end, or we want to be able to connect to the data using Microsoft Access so that we can use it that way. So as you can see, I can right click on these tables and select top thousand rows and it'll give me some data that is in the application. And this is the Azure SQL database that we're working with today. So let's say we wanted to have a Microsoft Access front end for this database as well. In this case, it would be a hybrid solution, which many, many of you have asked me about. And this is a good way to do a hybrid solution between Access and your Azure SQL database. So here we go. We're going to take a look at these names here. The name of the database is Toe-Operations. So we want to remember that. Uh, we're going to remember that plus a few other things. And what we're going to do is similar to our previous episode, we're going to use that create ribbon. We're going to create a new module. And then we're going to create a very simple uh, procedure that's going to create a DSN-less connection. And a DSN-less connection is much preferred if you are a database developer, you don't want to have to manage DSN files on every single user's computer. You just want the user to start the application. It knows where to go because of the DSN-less connection and everything is peachy. Okay, so the first thing we're doing here is we're going to create that connection string variable. We've done a dim strcnn and then we're going to put our driver information, our database and username and password into this string for the moment that we connect to our Azure SQL database. 
and this is where we get going. So the first thing we're going to run into, you'll see this ODBC driver, you know, 18, 17, 13. You should get the latest ODBC driver for SQL Server. You can Google that and download it. Um, I'm using 18 today, but you can type into your search bar on Windows. You can type in uh, ODBC into there, and you can you can open the ODBC administrator for 32 or 64 bit depending on which version of Office you have so make sure you pay attention to that and then you can check the drivers tab of that and you can find the version that's installed on your computer if you have it if not you can download it install it and make sure you have it uh, and then you can use that here so we're using ODBC driver 18 for SQL server I'm going to type in server it's TCP and then uh, we need the name of that database, which is going to be uh, a big long name like this here. There's our toe-operations.database.windows.net. Uh, let's see if I can remember that here. Uh, toe-operations.database.windows.net. So it's going to be a big long name like that because it is an Azure SQL database it's, that is on, on the web. and uh, and of course our application needs to know how to find it and that is the address there. Now you can put a comma, uh, I believe it's 1433 uh, if you want. It's not absolutely necessary because I think the, the de that's the default for, uh, for connections uh, but it's good to put it in and you can put in your database name. If I go back to the SSMS window here, I can see it, and that is toe-operations. Make sure I got that correctly. Uh, so you're going to learn to work between SSMS and your access database uh, as you work. And this is actually the same workflow that you'll find for SQL Express databases. And uh, very, very similar. And you can actually develop on SQL Express, do a whole bunch of development time, and then migrate your stuff to Azure SQL and then just change the connection and you're good to go and you can see how valuable that would be when you have your local speeds and everything uh, compared to using internet speed which is, which is a little bit slower uh, so there we go so we got database equals toe-operations the username is going to be the toe admin uh, user there and then the password will be and then I've concatenated mine. You might just type yours in. Um, mine is hidden in that mod other over there on the left uh, so that I don't have to show you guys my password. Uh, but you would actually type your password in here. And then after you're finished as an admin, after you're finished linking all the tables, you can delete the password from that line uh, and then save it as part of your database or just delete this whole subroutine altogether because the table links once we create them they will be persistent and you will not need to link them again and they will actually start uh, with a different user every time just beautifully you don't have to do anything once they're linked the first time um, and uh, unless you have table changes and then you need to relink it so you might add new fields to your tables then it's good practice to relink um, you can refresh with table additions uh, in some cases, but in general, it's just better to relink it. So you'll be, you know, do command dot delete uh, and delete object, and there'll be AC table, and you'll delete that uh, that linked table. Okay, so we need to make sure we put ODBC at the start of our string. That is something that you have to do in Microsoft Access when you're doing your ODBC. Uh, so I'm put that one in there. I just remembered that and let's go ahead and uh, get our table. So we're going to use that do command dot transfer database. It's going to be AC link. We're going to use ODBC as the type. The database name will be that big long string we created, the connection string. We're going to do AC table and then we're going to do the name of the table that we want. Now you might have you know, a bunch of tables that you're linking. In this case we're linking one right here but we'll do another one in a sec. Let's go ahead and save that and see if this actually works. So there we go. Looks like it went through. We didn't get an error so let's go check our access database. Okay so we've got a couple objects in there. If I put my if I click inside of there and hit an F5 it'll refresh it. There we go. Sometimes it doesn't refresh right away. 
and there's our toe underscore jobs table uh, from Azure SQL. Now, please note that this table works almost identically to a local Microsoft Access table, and that is why we use Azure SQL or SQL Express or SQL Server like this. Because that is a DAO table, it operates almost identically and therefore your code in, and objects in your Access database application will work almost the same way. So here we go. So I can go in, you know, I can change that to say by the hospital because I'm logged in right now as that admin user because we use the admin user login to get in here. So I can you know, change the data. It'll ask me if I want to change the layout because I made that column a bit wider there. Uh, but overall, you can see that this is almost identical to working with your access tables. And that is a beautiful thing because this is an online database on the web and it's awesome. And so you might be wondering, well, how can I link my other tables uh, using this method? And it is almost exactly the same. We did demonstrate this in the previous episode. Let's grab that uh, toe underscore driver table as well. Uh, now you could, you know, just copy and paste that line. You know, you could keep this code and just, you know, paste it in when you need to. Um, but we'll just change it here in a single line and we'll save that. And we'll hit go. And this time you can see that it's asking for that ID. Now this, this can be a problem. Uh, if you're relinking every time you open the database, but you don't need to relink the tables every time. You just need to set it once and then choose that ID as you go through. Just set it and forget it. You can save your application at that time and then roll it out to your users and they won't see this screen at, at all. So once you set it, they can use their logins that we'll show you how to create in just a moment. Um, you only need to do that step when when you're actually making changes to the database and relinking the tables. So you could add a whole bunch of lines just like I'm showing here, you know, and change those to different tables that you have. And you might keep this uh, procedure in or around your, your database. Um, hopefully not with the uh, password stored in it. You'll set the password at the time you relink and then delete it. Uh, but that is how you can use this and it's very, very handy very great for for setting up your uh, Azure SQL Microsoft Access connections. So there we go. Now we've got two tables in there. We can open both of those using the login that we had and that is exactly what we want to see there. But now we need to see how to add more users. And we can add more users of course by doing a script which we're going to run against our Azure SQL database. Now note that we cannot do this in the Azure portal front end. And that's one of the reasons why people don't usually notice that they can do this. Uh, but this is very, very similar to doing it in SQL Express. You can use these same commands almost identically to using uh, Azure SQL or SQL Express or SQL Server. Uh, but in this case, we need to do a few things just slightly differently because we're doing it on Azure. Uh, first, we're going to open a new query and we're going to set that uh, database to master uh, because we can't nav navigate around in Azure using the use uh, keyword there. So we can't say use master like we can in, in, you know, as in uh, SQL Express. Uh, but we're going to use that create login, rsmith with, with password and make a big up, jumbled up password. Um, and that's going to create a login on our Azure SQL uh, server. So that's the first step. And so what we want to do is we're going to we're going to execute that on its own, uh, and we'll say uh, it'll say command completed if you got it, and that means you've got your new you, your new login on the database. But the login cannot do anything yet because it doesn't have any permissions on databases or anything. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch that database on our script to the toe-operations database or whatever database you're using. And I'll just comment this out um, because we're not using the master database anymore. And uh, we can proceed from there. So from there we can do a create user rsmith. So now we're creating a user in the database. We're going to create user rsmith for login 
R. Smith. And uh, if you notice that those names are the same, you are absolutely correct because you could actually create user, you know, Robbie the man or, or something like that, uh, you know, for uh, that database uh, for the login R. Smith. Uh, but in this case, we'll put R. Smith, and we're just going to use the same username in our database as we created for our login. So those are two different things, uh, but uh, we're creating that user, and we're going to say go. So we'll hit execute, and that is going to give us uh, a user in our database. So now we have a user in our database. That's what we want to see, but that user can't actually do anything yet because he, he doesn't have permissions on anything. Um, so now we're going to add him to a role or we're going to add a role, add role member and we're going to uh, add that to uh, the DB data reader role um, and that's going to give him read only permissions. So we say add the user, add role member, DB data reader, R Smith, and we can select just the SQL that we want to execute and hit execute. Um, note that it only executes what you highlighted. That's how the editor works there. Um, if you don't have anything highlighted, it'll run the whole script, in which case you'll get an error. Uh, but now we have a read-only user. So let's go check that out. I'm going to close my database, my access database, because I'm going to release that connection that we had where we logged in as the admin user. And I'm going to copy this password for rsmith. And let's, uh, I copy that, so I'm going to reopen access because now it won't actually have any, uh, it won't have any login. It knows where to look for those tables, but it doesn't know, uh, it doesn't have a user attached to that. And so let's go and take a look at these tables. So the first time I double click on a table, or if your form opens a table or whatever in your database, the first time any table is accessed, it's going to present this window. Um, and so we're going to put in that rsmith and the password, and you'll see that now I can open all of the tables. I don't need to select any IDs or anything for the tables. I don't need to answer it on each on each time I open a new table, all of the tables that are openable by that uh, login uh, have been made available to my Microsoft Access database, and that's what we want to see there. And you'll see if I go in here, I you know try to change something, and I and I tab off of that row, you'll see oh look, oh, ODBC says update is not allowed. You know your permission was denied on object toe underscore jobs, and you know, even if you go out, it won't let you do anything. Uh, but if you close the table, it'll say you can't save at this time. And you can you can trap that error in your code. Uh, but the beautiful thing is, is that this is a real read-only situation, uh, which is a little bit harder to do with the native uh, Microsoft Access objects and security. Um, so you'll once you learn how to do this, you'll probably start to migrate your logins to the Azure SQL backend because it's much, much more robust uh, than your access uh, front end if you're using local tables in, you know, local access tables and security. Uh, so here we go. Let's go ahead and, and add that user to the data writer role. So we're going to highlight that, just that those rows that we want to run, and we'll hit execute. And that's going to add that R Smith user to the data writer. Uh, role and he's going to be able to change change data. Now we don't even for that one we don't even need to to log out and close the application. I can actually just go back to the table now and change the data tab off of that row and you can see that he already has that permission because ODBC is very smart that way. Um, it's going to know what his permissions are. Azure SQL is uh, handling that on the back end. And that is exactly what we want to see there. And so using this method, you can make very robust Microsoft Access applications that are completely online uh, for your users. Um, and that is really awesome. Uh, but there are some special cases. So if you're really creating stuff in your Azure SQL uh, backends and you have things like stored procedures, 
and where you know it changes a bunch store procedure changes a bunch of data and you're getting an error in your access front end saying hey I can't you know user can't run that then you need to do a grant execute on your stored procedure uh, for whatever particular user is allowed to, to do that um, or group uh, can do that and so make sure that you pay attention to that I've been tripped up by that many times uh, you know because the uh, DB data reader and DB data writer are awesome for your your very basic apps but almost inevitably you add some stored procedures to your Azure SQL database and that is how you can add more users with different permissions to your Microsoft Access database on Azure SQL. Do you have your remote desktop open on the internet? Make sure to download my BZ RDP Cloaker. The link is in the description.